We've seen efforts, like I said, through proactive, uh, high visibility patrols and confidential law enforcement operations. These operations and efforts will result in increased safety for shoppers, merchants, and our retailers. Organized retail crime remains an issue from brazen smash and grabs to sophisticated theft rings. Organized retail crime is a concern for retailers and has the focus and attention of law enforcement throughout California. These criminals have a negative impact on our communities and our businesses. To the criminals who are tempted to engage in retail theft and believe this is an easy score, the deck is stacked against you. Law enforcement is organized and proactively taking steps to identify, arrest, and hold you accountable. The CHP is excited that so many of our law enforcement partners are joining the fight against retail theft and can devote resource to this issue full time. With the grant funding made available, there are over a dozen additional task forces that have been organized or in the process of standing up now. These task forces will work together like law enforcement in California always does to make sure California is safe during this holiday season and throughout the rest of the year. I'm excited to have two of our law enforcement partner agencies represented here today. And at this time, we'll turn it over to Assistant Sheriff Francisco from Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Good morning, and thank you for inviting the LA County Sheriff's Department to talk about such an important issue. As we enter into the holiday season, as the commissioner said, we want our communities to know our department is committed to combating organized retail theft uh, that's going on in, in LA County. And we want the community to feel safe when they're out shopping and the business owners, we don't want them suffering financial loss at the hands of these organized retail theft crews. Uh, and we're not only focusing on the individuals uh, that are committing the thefts, but we're going uh, after the criminal chain, which is the getaway drivers uh, and those selling the items, whether it be online or in person. 10 weeks ago, Sheriff Luna created a task force out of our major crimes bureau. And that consists of 32 personnel dedicated just to combating organized retail theft. And within this task force, there's a detective assigned specifically to conduct outreach to the business community as well as our residents. And that can, uh, task force is comprised of three uh, strategically placed teams throughout the county. And each detective on that task force has been assigned as a geographic area that they're responsible for. And they're also assigned individual retail businesses. So those businesses have a direct line to our detectives and the team members on that team. The task force uh, obviously is partnered with the LAPD, CHP, and several other partnering, partnering agencies throughout the county. And we have conducted joint operations and they're continually sharing real-time information uh, with these crews. And we're also uh, joined resources to work towards reducing the overall thefts that are occurring, which would be proactive work. Uh, a notable investigation handled by this task force dealt with a crew of individuals targeting BevMo stores. And that crew was responsible for targeting uh, and committing at least seven robberies that we know of in the LA County area, which uh, had a total loss of about $10,000 to those store owners. So they quickly identified the suspects and those suspects were apprehended for the robberies. During the holiday season, we do expect to see an increase, um, but the proactive work that we're gonna be doing hopefully will prevent uh, community members from feeling unsafe as well as business uh, store owners from, from losing property. To this date, since this task force was started, they've conducted 46 um, operations that we worked hand in hand with loss prevention officers and uh, were able to uh, regain the property that was stolen from those businesses. We do have an increase in robbery theft crews that are coming from Northern California. They're driving to Los Angeles and commit these thefts and go back to Northern California. So we are in constant contact with those Northern California law enforcement agencies and sharing that information. Uh, the LA County Sheriff's Department is also a co-chair of the Los Angeles Organized Retail Crimes Association, 
which is comprised of several hundred retail businesses and law enforcement. And the goal of that organization association is to uh, work with the public and reduce these organized retail thefts. We work with our local, state, and federal prosecutors to reduce these crimes by investigation, prosecute, prosecution, and education. And in the first 10 weeks of the, uh, the task force operation, the team made over 180 arrests related to retail theft and recovered eight firearms and served 109 search warrants. So the retail theft grant uh, that we obtained allows this task force to continue to aggressively investigate these thefts and, uh, and provides us with the necessary equipment to support the mission. So thank you again for allowing me to speak on such an important issue. And I wanna remind the community if they are out shopping and they see one of these thefts occur, to be a good witness and provide that information to the uh, Sheriff's Department or, or local police agency. And now I'd like to introduce the San Francisco District Attorney, Brooke Jenkins. Thank you, Assistant Sheriff Francisco. I am here today to welcome and invite shoppers here to San Francisco for the holiday season. And most importantly, to reassure them and everyone else that we will continue working with our law enforcement partners to combat organized and other retail theft during this time, just as we do all year round. Viral videos of groups stealing from stores throughout our state continue to be an issue. There were just several such thefts uh, this week uh, that were all over the internet. It is not something that I, as the San Francisco District Attorney, take lightly whatsoever. Certain news outlets have continued to push a narrative that we do not enforce our laws here in San Francisco and in the state of California. But I am here today to remind everyone that those days are over here in San Francisco. They ended when I took office 17 months ago. We will prosecute those who commit crime in this city, and that includes organized retail theft. My office too is a part of a regional task force that works with law enforcement agencies and retailers from all across the Bay Area to combat these issues, as well as a task force here in San Francisco with our San Francisco specific partners to address the issues here in San Francisco. Since I took office last July, we have seen significant progress in the number of arrests of individuals participating in organized retail theft events, and we are taking those prosecutions more seriously than we ever have. That is something that we must do to correct this problem. When stores are forced to close due to rampant theft, our communities lose important and valuable jobs and access to much needed goods and services. Most recently, I was in a Target here in San Francisco that was closing in line at the pharmacy. And the person in front of me began discussing how he was going to lose the pharmacy that was closest to his home. That causes community members to have to go, oftentimes without cars, to much further locations to receive medications that they need and other goods that are necessary and vital to their lives. I, too, want to thank the governor for his leadership in devoting specific resources to organize retail theft across the state of California. My office, as well as the San Francisco Police Department, were recipients of the Organized Retail Theft Grant. Uh, what that means for the San Francisco DA's office is that we have been able to appoint a specific attorney dedicated to the vertical prosecution of organized retail theft. That means that this attorney will take the case from the moment that we receive it, decide what charges are appropriate, and prosecute that case through to jury trial. That lawyer will also serve as a liaison between our office and our law enforcement agency partners, as well as the retailers to ensure that our prosecutions are successful. We also are able to appoint a specific investigator in our office to this as well, thanks to this grant. And we are working to appoint that person as we speak. What we will see is that the networks that are, that are committing these crimes will be able to better be identified by these, this prosecutor and this uh, investigator in our office so that we can ensure that we are connecting the dots across 
both those who are going into the stores to commit these crimes, as well as who they are providing those goods to, to sell them thereafter. The San Francisco Police Department, as a part of this grant, was awarded $15 million, which will assist them in being able to staff officers in our business corridors uh, to ensure that we are working to deter these thefts, but also be able to invest in technology that will assist us in catching those who commit these crimes. We are, again, thankful to, to the governor for his leadership on this issue, which will make a critical difference in the way that we are able to both catch and prosecute those who commit these types of crimes. Recently, the San Francisco Police Department, as well as my office, announced the Safe Shopper Initiative here in San Francisco, which is designed to combat retail theft during the holiday season. We will ensure that there are both uniformed and undercover officers in our stores and around our stores to ensure that, again, those who are coming to shop feel safe and are safe, but also that to the extent anyone commits retail theft in our stores, that we have a better chance of catching them and a better chance of collecting the evidence necessary for my office to successfully prosecute. And I can tell you that our work is already paying off in San Francisco. We have seen an, uh, an uprise in significant arrests and convictions related to organized retail theft. Most recently, we had a smash and grab in our Union Square corridor, one of the most popular shopping areas of our city. And we were able to, and, and San Francisco police were able to effectuate an arrest in that case. And we are now prosecuting those perpetrators as we speak for the crime that they committed. We have seen uh, successful arrests for multiple thefts from our Lululemon stores here in San Francisco, which have become a, a popular target. But the San Francisco Police Department and their law enforcement partners are working diligently to ensure that those who commit those thefts are caught, and we have been able to charge those individuals with these thefts as well. We most recently announced charges of, against five individuals who were connected to an organized mass theft in one of our Walgreens that took place on October 13th. And so again, we are seeing that this work is paying off and that it is translating into my office's ability to hold these perpetrators accountable. But it doesn't stop with the charging. We know that we have to secure convictions. And I am happy to announce that very recently, one of our attorneys secured a jury conviction of an individual who committed a mass looting theft at a Walgreens here in San Francisco. And so that even tells you that the citizens of San Francisco are also playing a part in holding those who commit these crimes accountable. And that does not stop now. So as I close, I want to emphasize that the San Francisco Police Department and all of our law enforcement partners, including the CHP, our Sheriff's Department and others, will be out in full force to catch those who engage in retail theft in our stores during this holiday season. And that I, as the District Attorney of San Francisco, am committed to accountability. I will continue to work hard to ensure that those who both work and shop in our businesses here are safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, District Attorney. And thank you to all our speakers. We'll now transition to the Q&A portion of the program. If you're a member of the media and you would like to ask a question, please click the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen and then unmute yourself when called upon. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please click the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen and then unmute yourself when called upon. Once unmuted, please state your name and outlet before asking your question. And if your question is directed as, at a specific speaker, please do make that clear. Uh, please note there's a slight delay, so allow me a few moments to select the first outlet. Thank you. Our first question goes to Ted Chen. Ted, please unmute yourself. Hi, yes, uh, Ted Chen, NBC4 in Los Angeles. This question is directed at uh, Assistant Sheriff uh, Francisco. Um, when you talked about um, helping specific uh, businesses, uh, specific retail businesses, can you elaborate more on what those businesses may be? And, and I believe, I think it was you that talked about 
confidential um, assistance uh, as well and what that looks like. Yeah, so we're working, I mean, the stores are all over the county, uh, outlet malls, the Citadel, and what we do is work and partner with those loss prevention um, so that they can give us real-time information. And we do two type of operations. Uh, one is high visibility where you're gonna see uniforms walking in and around those areas. And the other is um, more surveillance undercover type operations where you might not see a uniform personnel, but we have personnel in and around the store uh, to be able to react to any theft that occurs so that we can get you know, the suspects exiting the location as well as getting in a car and driving away. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Assistant Sheriff. Our, our next question goes to Jorge Macias. Uh, Jorge, please unmute yourself when prompted. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, Jorge Luis Macias, La Opinion newspaper. This question is uh, for Sheriff Francisco and also for the District Attorney in San Francisco. Uh, how are you guys are going to deal with minors involved in the smash and grab robberies as it happens constantly in the store in East Los Angeles? And I remember that, uh, how do you explain that this store has been robbed more than 12 times in the last three months? even during the daylight. And the second question is, after an arrest of a minor, what is happening with them? So I'm happy to start uh, from the prosecution perspective. Um, we, of course, treat our minors differently than we do our adults. They are, they are not adults. Um, that doesn't mean that we abandon accountability. We just have to have a, accountability that's appropriate for juveniles. And uh, here in San Francisco, if it is um, a misdemeanor crime, those are normally not charged by my office. They are dealt with in a different manner by our juvenile probation department who determines what type of programming that the that the minor needs. Um, but to the extent it is felony conduct, then we do charge that case. Uh, and we make sure that we try to engage these minors in sufficient minor in programming sufficient to, program. to make sure that they have the appropriate form of accountability for them, but also to hopefully route their lives into a more positive trajectory. Um, that requires ensuring that they are back in school, working with our juvenile probation department to, again, in, in, find uh, outlets for them um, and supervision for them so that they are engaging in, in the programs that they need, as well as being provided the resources that they need. Um, but certainly we have to work on this issue. We do know that a large number of juveniles are engaged in this conduct. Uh, and so we are trying to make sure that we have the appropriate form of accountability specifically for them, um, which of course is, is always going to be different than what we do for our adults. But um, it's requiring that they have supervision to see through what their programming is, in my view. Thank you. Uh, reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please click your raised hand icon uh, and then unmute yourself when prompted. Looks like we have one additional question uh, from, uh, it doesn't quite say who, it says Zoom user. Uh, Zoom user, whoever you are, you're you're allowed to talk now. Hello, thank you. This is Libertad Pedraza with Telemundo 48, and this question is for DA Jenkins. Um, I would like uh, to ask you something that we see in San Francisco talking with business owners is that in the holiday season, uh, most of the law enforcement go to the biggest uh, malls and parts as Union Squares, uh, Union Square. And one of the things that they tell me is that in Mission District and other areas that are known for have local businesses, they feel uh, left behind in this holiday season. So my question will be, um, how are you dividing the law enforcement during, during these days? And um, how are you ensuring that those areas all around the city are also safe? 
So the San Francisco Police Department, I will try to speak on their behalf. They are, they are fully aware that we need to uh, maintain staffing all across the city. Um, thankfully, some of the grant funding as well as um, a supplemental budget that was provided to them will allow for overtime work in our Union Square District, which we know um, since the incident that happened a couple of years ago, uh, the mass looting incident needs significant attention from the police department. Uh, but we, they will be relying upon on their district stations to ensure that the business corridors around our city and other areas are still staffed with foot patrols um, and officers present. So I know that that is top of mind for them um, not to abandon any other part of the city in order to protect another part. Um, and so they will be ensuring that across our city, district stations have sufficient staffing for uh, specific uh, retail corridors. Thank you, District Attorney. Uh, looks like we have one additional question from uh, Vanya Patino uh, with Spectrum News. Uh, please unmute yourself. I'm running for time. Um, my question is for LA County Assistant Sheriff. Uh, and again, Vanya Patino with Spectrum News here. Um, I think the, the biggest concern we've heard from reviews is the point consequence, right? Um, are you seeing here in LA the people just were not able to arrest, being prosecuted, or seeing some sort of consequence? So I'm not sure if everybody else had trouble hearing the question, but I think the question was, are the cases being prosecuted? Vanya, could you please, please clarify? We had some connection issues. You're also welcome to type the question in the chat if you're having uh, difficulties. Are you able to hear us, Vanya? I think she's having some difficulties on her end, uh, but we can certainly follow. Oh, let's see here. I think a colleague is raising her their hand. Let's see here. Vanya, did that work for you? Okay, let me know if you guys can hear me. I think um, I lost. Uh, we account. can hear you loud and clear now. Thank you. Please. Okay, please. awesome. Thank you so much for your guys' time and patience with the technical difficulties there. Um, so yeah, the question was um, to, to the consequences. Okay, <laughs> there's another one. Um, to the consequences, um, have you guys seen that the people that have been able that have been arrested, uh, being prosecuted, or serving some sort of um, consequence after um, that arrest is made? Yeah, so I could tell you, I mean, we're still in the preliminary of our task force, but of the 94 cases presented, um, 68 were felony arrest and three were felony juveniles, 25 were adult misdemeanor arrests, and one was a juvenile misdemeanor detention. And of those 68 felony cases that were presented to the LA County District Attorney's Office, 31 were filed, so they still haven't gone to court yet, and the rest are still being reviewed. And of the 26 misdemeanors that were submitted, nine were filed, nine cases were filed, and the rest are still being reviewed. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time for our task force uh, to see the results of, you know, people serving time uh, for those offenses. And maybe the CHP can um, talk a little bit more about their task force and if they have any um, results of sentencing. Yeah, thanks, Holly. I don't have the LA numbers in front of me. I could tell you by memory of the cases we do submit to LA County, about 80% of them are filed. Um, we were going through to find the final disposition of them. I don't have that information in front of me, but happy to share it. Thank you, Assistant Sheriff, and uh, thank you, Commissioner. Our next question goes to Thomas Hughes. Uh, Thomas, please unmute yourself. 
Hi, thank you. Yeah, Thomas Hughes from Bay City News. His question, um, I think I want to pose it to DA Jenkins, is uh, if someone sees a witnesses retail theft, if the part of the theme here is people feeling safe, what, what do you recommend they do? Sometimes people want to get involved or they don't know what to do, report it to the store manager or or call 911. Um, the second question is, uh, the do you know the length of the grant, how long those that investigator and the dedicated attorney uh, are going to be funded by that grant? Yes. So let me address the first question, which is what other shoppers should do if they see or witness um, a theft event happening in the store. Uh, I want to caution first anyone from trying to intervene in these situations. We have seen over uh, the recent past that these uh, criminals have become far more brazen and are willing to become more violent in these situations. And so I would caution anyone against trying to confront them uh, from that standpoint as a civilian who happens to be shopping in the store, uh, but certainly alert an employee. Um, certainly call nine one one if you see something dangerous, something going on that 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 law enforcement needs to know about. Um, make sure that you identify yourself um, in that call because oftentimes what we need are eyewitnesses who can help to identify these perpetrators later or can help serve as a witness in a in a future prosecution. And so if you just call anonymously, it can it can make it difficult for us on the back end. Um, and you can always be interviewed later if if the law enforcement agency knows who you are and how to contact you. Um, as far as the grant itself, um, it is right now our grant was for two million dollars. So that should fund us for for quite a bit of time. For those two positions, it will cover the salaries of those two employees. Um, my hope is that this isn't the end of that grant. Uh, you know, hopefully there will still, um, from a budgetary standpoint, that the state will still be afforded to fund this grant uh, going forward. Are you able to quantify how many more cases you think that that dedicated attorney will able be able to prosecute compared to not having them? So I wouldn't say that it's going to translate into us prosecuting more cases, uh, regardless of how many staff members we have. We have to charge what we can prove. Um, what it will do, though, is to allow us to be more strategic in those prosecutions. It will allow this attorney to have a, a breadth of knowledge of who some of our chronic offenders are, how to link certain groups to one another, members of certain organized retail theft rings and groups to one another, um, to see who's working in concert. Concert, to, to have a closer relationship and a partnership with our stores to ensure that we have the necessary information, evidence, and witnesses from those stores. Um, so we do expect this attorney to carry a caseload. Um, and rather than these than these more serious cases being spread across, you know, a larger unit of our office being handled by numerous attorneys, because they will have a specific focus here, uh, I, they will be able to handle more, more of these serious cases and complex cases. And like I said, bridge that gap that often happens when we are um, trying to work with the stores to get the evidence that we need. Thank you, District Attorney. Our final question goes to Suzanne. Suzanne, if you could please unmute yourself. Hi, uh, this is Suzanne with ABC7 in San Francisco. First question, are there any efforts to change legislation for retail theft penalties, like an effort to change the threshold for what's considered a misdemeanor versus a felony? So many stores are saying, hey, these guys feel like they can get away with it and they keep coming back. So I can certainly take that question. There have been efforts over the past year or more uh, to try to repeal certain parts of Prop 47, which is the proposition, the statewide proposition that uh, was approved by the voters of California to reduce the felony threshold uh, or, or raise the felony threshold from $450 to $950. Um, but what Prop 47 also did was it repealed our ability to graduate consequences for repeat offenders of petty theft. So we used to be able, if somebody had two prior convictions for petty theft, decide as prosecutors to use our discretion to charge them with a felony on a third or offense or an offense thereafter um, if they were engaged in repeat conduct. And so what I have seen more recently is that more of the attention has gone towards that repealing that particular issue as opposed to the 950 threshold um, and reducing it back. 
although there is significant attention on the threshold because of the fact that some of our merchants, um, you know, who are not high de high end designers and other things do have a serious issue with the amount of theft going on in their stores that only constitutes a misdemeanor. Um, and so, yes, there is significant attention on that. There were a number of bills that came through the state legislature this year about Prop 47 and repealing one or more parts of it. Unfortunately, they did not make it all the way through, but I do believe there's going to be significant attention on this going forward. Thank you. I do have one more quick question. Is that possible? Go ahead. Uh, so today you've talked about how, yes, there will be more police, there will be more patrols in shopping districts, but is the message getting out to our young people who are involved in these crimes? What concerted effort is there statewide to prevent smash and grabs involving teens? Just last week in South San Francisco, there were 10 to 15 teens involved in a smash and grab at Sephora. That's the most recent example. And many of them are getting away with it. So I... I'm not sure I, I fully understand your question. A part of what I believe is going to be a deterrent is the is the um, presence of law enforcement. I, I, you know, one thing that I've heard even through interviews of suspects uh, in cases that we have is that they are deterred when they see a uniformed officer inside of a store or outside of a store. Um, they don't choose the stores where they see those uniformed officers present. So we do have to see and view law enforcement as a necessary deterrent to people committing these crimes. We also, of course, need to, as a state, invest in the front end of this situation, is which is trying to redirect our youth in a more positive direction, try to get them jobs at our stores so that they are not stealing from them. Um, and that's something that, you know, is a large scale issue that we're going to have to address um, in a different way, right? That's outside of the law enforcement context. But we certainly have to create a situation of deterrence, which is to the extent that they believe that they won't get away with something, uh, that they won't even try it. Thank you. And with that, I'm, I'm not seeing any further questions in the queue. If folks do have questions after this briefing, uh, feel free to reach out to the governor's press office and we can direct it to the appropriate agency. Um, that's govpressoffice.gov.ca.gov. I just want to thank our speakers uh, for joining us today and, and members of the media. And with that, let me hand it over to Commissioner Dury for some final words uh, before we close out the program. No, thank you, Izzy. And thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, DA Jenkins, Assistant Chair 